Hello and welcome back everybody. Today I would like to talk about engineers weapons, at least their primary weapons, because I've been recently getting a lot of comments both on stream and in videos talking about engineers primary weapons for one reason or another. One of the most common things that I've heard, at least during live streams primarily, has been that people have found engineers primary weapons kind of underwhelming and usually they would like me to recommend some sort of build for them, whether they're using overclocks or not because they're not the biggest fan of the primary weapons. And I would like to kind of discuss that and just kind of go over how I feel about them and kind of why I think that the engineer's weapons might feel a little bit lackluster, at least again, primary weapons compared to some of the other classes and also just the difficulty of balancing engineer in general, I think probably from the dev's perspective. So engineer has three current primary weapons that might change in the future, but right now we've got the Warthog Auto Shotgun, which is your starting weapon, Stubby, which is your second primary that you can unlock, the submachine gun that has electricity damage on it, and then the Loki or the Lock 1 Smart Rifle, which is your third op and has an auto lock feature on it. The Warthog originally when I started playing this game, I found to be kind of underwhelming, if I'm being honest. It it did okay damage I thought but it chewed through ammo pretty fast. Damage on it is actually pretty good overall because if you do build it for damage you can still one shot headshot grunts on any difficulty. That's assuming that you get all the pellets to hit them in the head though which can be more difficult the longer range you get because the more spread you're going to have with those pellets. But the spread with the shotgun is actually not so bad so even at medium to longish range you can pretty effectively one or two shot regular grunts and you can pick off longer range enemies that have low health like web spitters without too much trouble. So once I got more familiar with the shotgun, I found that it really wasn't all that bad to use, but it did take quite a bit of time for me getting used to this. There is also another issue that I had with the shotgun, at least starting out. It's less of an issue now, and that was with the small magazine size slash the somewhat long reload speed because you are reloading it pretty frequently. The most shells you can put into your shotgun, I think without any overclocks is 10 but that's going with both capacity upgrades. Usually I just go with one of those upgrades, so I go up to eight shots, and eight shots you can still go through pretty fast in this game. Now eight shots is better than the original six, but you still are going to be reloading a fair amount of time. That does get offset though, once you start uh, learning how to reload cancel the shotgun. The shotgun is actually really easy to reload cancel. And Stubby I've also heard is not very impressive to some people. Stubby holds a lot of bullets, pretty much everybody agrees with that, which is generally true. You tend to run through ammo less with Stubby than the other two options. Then the usual downsides are that Stubby doesn't do very much damage per shot. The lightning effect can be kind of finicky, it, which is kind of true. It's just a percentage chance, so if you're low rolling or if you're rolling it on enemies that you don't really care about electrifying, it's not as big a deal. And Stubby, without any sort of mods or overclocks on it, can feel a little bit underwhelming. Generally, there's like two ways that I build Stubby, either going with all two build, which is just all electricity build, and that actually does pretty well and it's pretty consistent towards crowds. Still doesn't do great against big enemies, but at least you get some crowd control and your electricity is triggering pretty often, so putting electricity on enemies is not that difficult. The other option would just be going with a bunch of ammo and a bunch of mag size and more rate of fire with Stubby, so that it's more of a regular submachine gun that you'd find in most other games. That can also work. You can clear up crowds a little bit quicker with it. You can kill big enemies a little bit quicker with it, but you're going to have less overall crowd control and your electricity status effect is going to be far more varied. And I would overall agree that Stubby is much better once you start getting overclocks because a lot of Stubby's overclocks are quite simple, but they're simple for what Stubby needs. And then for our third weapon for NG as a primary weapon is the Loki Smart Rifle or Lock 1 Smart Rifle. This weapon usually only gets one major complaint, or two major complaints that I've heard from people. One is that they don't like the lock-on feature because there's no other way to really use it beyond the lock-on feature, which is kind of true. Just tap firing the Loki isn't really going to be that useful. It's fine for picking things off at a distance or starting a dreadnought cocoon or firing at a loot bugs or whatever it might be, just enemies that you can't target that easily. It, it's okay for that, but you're never really going to be using it during a horde fight or anything like that. You're just going to be using the lock-on feature, and that can kind of take away from some of the active fighting, especially on the lower difficulties where bugs aren't swarming in. The second main issue with the Loki is that you can run through ammo with it really fast, which is true. You don't have the most amount of shots with this overall. There's only one option in Tier 1 to get more ammo overall, and even that, it's not a ton of extra bullets. Certain overclocks can help with this, though, but again, that means you're going to be 
much higher level, you're going to be playing the game more, you're going to be getting more supplies, and you're going to be putting these on the weapons, and they may only be a few specific overclocks, like Explosive Chemical Rounds is really strong on the Loki, and Executioner is really strong on the Loki. Even though you lose ammo with that one, you make up for it with damage, so you usually save more ammo overall. You also have the, the big elephant in the room with Engineer, and that is secondary weapons, because basically everybody loves Inji's secondary weapons. Which isn't too surprising. The grenade launcher can hit like an absolute truck and gets crazy with overclocks. It's also really good for crowd control. The breach cutter destroys basically everything in its way and it can just cut right through enemies. You don't even need to be aiming at their weak point to do massive damage to them. And the shard diffractor is basically the minigun from Gunner, but it also does fire damage and it's your secondary weapon. So you get a primary as your secondary, or at least another class's primary as your secondary. That's the way I feel about it. Now, I believe the reason why engineer can run through ammo so quick is simply because you well you can spray it out really fast you're allowed to do that so you can do a lot of damage per second which is going to eat through your ammo supply really quick but i believe the devs had to kind of balance ng this way just so that you wouldn't do certain jobs better than other classes the main ones i'm thinking here are driller and gunner generally every class has something that they do really well uh, gunner and driller do crowd control really well and sustain fire really really well you don't usually run out of ammo with either of those classes um, at least if you're just playing in a normal way there are certain overclocks that can certainly make it so you can run through ammo quick with those classes too but for the most part you're usually quite ammo efficient and you're one of the last ones to be running out of ammo ng and scout tend to be running out of ammo really quick and for scout that isn't such a huge deal because a lot of the time you have so much mobility that you usually don't need to be fighting tons of hordes you can just move around the map and kill things as you see fit or kill high value targets and that's kind of a trade-off for your class i think the main trade-off for ng's class is simply that you're very flexible and that you essentially have three weapons because you have whatever your primary weapon is that you're using whatever your secondary weapon is you're using and your turrets Turrets are pretty safe, pretty easy to set up, and can hold an area. They can also just clear up small things really easy. They can clear up even medium-sized enemies quite easy, and they can even inflict a decent amount of DPS to larger enemies. So I think that's probably the main reason why Inji doesn't have the most amount of ammo. Now, yes, you could say Driller has a similar setup where you have the drills, but most newer players aren't really going to be using the drills as weapons primarily. That's generally going to be more experienced players that are very comfortable fighting in melee range. For a new player, that's probably going to be your last resort for trying to kill something. At least it was for me when I first started playing this game. I don't really know what else there is to say about Engineer. Engineer is a really great class. What do you guys think about Engineer and what do you think about their primary weapons in particular? Do you think that they're underpowered? Do you think that they're fine? I'm kind of more on the side that they are overall pretty fine. I don't really have a problem with any of them. Some of them could use a little bit of a tweak, like give the Warthog a couple more overclocks, and then maybe some other mod options for some of the weapons. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye!